simple data structures using inheritance. In the previous videos, we've been working with our user-implemented package called MyPackage. In the first video, we looked at the animal module located inside the inheritance subdirectory of this package. This time, we're going to look at the module included inside structures. which is also called structures. And what we're doing with this module is implementing two simple data structures, a stack and a queue. Now a stack is what we call a first in, first out data structure. I'm sorry, last in, first out data structure. LIFO. And we can just make a comment out of that model. The Q, that is the first in, first out data structure. A stack, you can imagine that if you were to have a stack of rings, like in the Towers of Hanoi exercise, and you place one ring onto the bar, and then you place another ring on top of it, and another ring on top of that, you will not be able to retrieve the first ring until you've retrieved the very top ring, that is, all the rings on top of the ring you want to get to. That is the structure of a stack, that if we place something into the stack and then we place another item into the stack, we won't be able to retrieve the first item until we retrieve the last. This is useful in implementing, for example, the back, the back button in your web browser. Every time you hit the back button, it's like you're taking a page off of the stack and looking at the next one down. A queue, first in, first out. Americans might say standing in line. The British might say standing in the queue. A queue is a line, and as you might expect at a line for, let's say a line for buying tickets for something, the first one in the queue should be the first one to be able to buy tickets. It wouldn't make sense if a line were more like a stack where the last one in line is also the first one to buy tickets. So queues are important in implementing, for example, a print queue. That is, if you and everyone else in your office needs to print something off of the printer, it doesn't make sense that the last person who said they needed to print, who clicked the print button, gets to print off their document first. Instead, it makes sense that the first person who indicated a job to print, job printed first. So stacks, last in, first out, and queues, first in, first out, are different ways of structuring data, and they each have their uses. So let's talk about how we've implemented a stack and a queue. We've done so extremely simply. We are inheriting from list. And if you haven't watched the video on inheritance, go take a minute and watch that. We are implementing a subclass of list. So everything we can do with a list, we can now do with a stack. We simply call the super constructor. We call the constructor of the parent class, which in this case is list. So what we're doing is creating a list. And then we're defining a method. We're overriding a method whose functionality we want to change a little bit. 
when we call the pop method on stack, we're simply going to call the pop method on the parent class. If anybody thinks this is a little strange, it is. We're overriding the method with the exact same method. I'm including it here for completeness to see the difference between a stack and a queue. Honestly, if you just had a list and you popped off of the end, you would still have a stack-like data structure. All we're doing here is putting a name on it. So maybe it's better to look at the queue that we've implemented down here. Notice a lot of the syntax is the same. We're calling the list as the parent class, calling the super constructor from that parent class, and down here we truly are redefining pop. There are ways to pop from the zero index on a list, but we want this queue data structure to be intuitive, and so we simply say that when we pop from a queue, we're not popping from the last item that we added. We're popping from the first item that we added. And that's it. That's all there is to it. These are our simple stack and queue data structures. So let's see how they work. Okay, we're going to start a stack, call it S, and a Q, I instantiate a Q, and call that the letter Q. Notice the same methods we could use on a list, that is the same methods we could use on a parent class still work for the stack and queue. And that is part of the power of inheritance, not having to rewrite methods over and over again for classes that are subclasses of parent classes. So right now we have a stack and a queue. We have appended one, two, three to each of our stack and queue. Let's see what happens when we pop from the stack. 3, 2, 1. Last in, first out. One more time. And we get an index error. We were trying to pop from an empty list. Yeah, our stack is empty. What about the queue? Okay, we popped a 1. First in, first out. Now it's empty. So by inheriting from Python's list class and then overriding the method whose behavior we want to change, we were able to implement really a queue very simply. And we also pretended to implement a stack, but we didn't really change anything. You could if you wanted pop to behave a little bit differently. You could do the same thing. You could override the pop method and change its behavior to be whatever you'd like.